Hey everybody, welcome to the van. Well, this is my first of my camping videos today and I was planning on doing it outside. But as I look outside through the windows, it is snowing. So let's start it within the van and hopefully by the time we get to one of the end videos, it'll have actually warmed up here in Southern Alberta. So I wanna keep these to about five minutes in length. So I'm gonna go through stuff pretty quick, but I'm gonna do multiple videos on the things. So the first one today that we're gonna talk about is your shelter or whether you need a shelter or what you are looking for. So let's go through some of the types of shelters that you may find. Well, let, first thing is, you do you actually even need a shelter? Well, you can probably get away if you're just going out overnight and the weather's nice and the bugs aren't out, of just taking some tarp or a ground sheet and putting it on the ground, throwing some sleeping pads on top of it or sleeping bags or comforters or whatever it is on top of it and having a sleep and you'll probably have a good sleep depending where you are and depending what the weather's like. But to do that quite often, you're probably not going to wanna to do that every night, especially if it starts to rain or the bugs come out. So what should you look at from there? Well, if the ground sheet is out, how about putting a little tarp over top of where you're sleeping? You can do that with a tarp, you can do that with a ground sheet, you can do that with just about anything. Um, string a rope between two trees and put the tarp over you. That will work again the problem there is bugs if you want to upgrade from there a little bit more you can go and get a tent obviously uh, tents nowadays are amazing um, you can get them from a small pup tent where it barely sleeps one person up to a tent that you can sleep your entire family in, plus most of your neighborhood so you can look at doing that as well that works wonderful but you have to put that investment in how about just sleeping in the back of your vehicle? If you have an SUV or if you have a truck with a topper on it, they can be amazing to sleep in. Take some stuff out, put on the whatever it is, the bed of the truck or in the back of the SUV, like comforters, and then throw some a sheet on and another sheet over top of that so that you can crawl between the two sheets, then some comforters on that, and you can just sleep there. The benefits to that is, is that you don't have to set it up. It's always ready to go if you don't need that space. You can just leave it there if it's enclosed and covered. And that you don't have to worry about bugs. You don't have to worry about rain, so on and so forth. So that will work as well. Going from there, then you get into some of the more, well, expensive things. And one of the first things that you can look at getting into, again, depending upon the vehicle that you're driving, is you can look at pulling yourself a tent trailer. Now, tent trailers are amazing, and I'm gonna talk about more about each one of these later. Today, I'm just gonna talk about the different ones that you can get, but tent trailers, they have a lot of benefits to them. From the tent trailer, then you can look at getting into something like a hard-sided trailer. Now, there's hard-sided pop-up trailers, and there's hard-sided um, always-up trailers. The pop-up trailers are a lot like tent trailers. What you can do is that you pull into a site, you pop them up. A lot of them are A-frame or different types of designs. And you have hard sides around you and away you go. You can get into the hard-sided trailer that you tow with your vehicle. You can then get into a hard-sided fifth-wheel trailer. Now, the issue with a fifth-wheel trailer is you're going to need a truck for it. And if you're going to have to buy a truck, it may be more expensive than you could possibly imagine by getting into it because you have to buy a $60,000 truck and you have to buy a $30,000 or $40,000 or $50,000 fifth wheel. So that could be out of your price range. The nice things about fifth wheels are if you've already got a truck, you're halfway there. And the other thing is that they're really a lot easier to tow in many situations than a regular trailer. People find them easier to back up. People find them just easier to pull. Um, if that's done right, a regular trailer is just as easy. But the problem is, is a lot of people skimp when they get the hitch on the regular vehicle. They don't get any extra accessories with it. And they find that it's just a little more difficult to tow. If you have a truck, or even if you don't have a truck and you want to get into it, the next thing you could look at is you could look at a truck camper. Um, if you know me, you know that I loved my truck camper when I had it. it. has lots of benefits and there's some drawbacks, but it was wonderful to have. So that's another thing that you can look at. From the, there, you then get into your self-motorized or motorized or whatever 
vehicles such as vans and in vans you have class b vans which is your regular everyday van maybe with a raised roof a class b plus van which is a regular van but they've expanded the body on it so it's a little bit wider then you get into what i've got and i i just call it a camper van but they've gotten into calling them conversion vans or even expedition vans and what they are is they're generally made more for off-road and again like i said before i'm going to cover off each one of these more in depth in the next video so don't worry if you don't quite understand what they are from the van world you then get into your motorhomes and in the motorhomes you start with the class c motorhome and what a class c motorhome is is it's a truck cab so the engine and where you sit is a truck cab and then the rest behind that is built on now the benefits of it is is that the engine and everything is a regular standard engine easy to service you don't need any special take to a special garage other than the size of the vehicle uh, benefits are they're big and with that sleeping above the cab that, that actually opens up a lot of space for them uh, drawbacks is is depending upon how big you go they can be interesting to drive and I'll leave it at that till I expand on that then from the class C you get into the big ones which are the class A's class A's have a lot of benefits and there's a lot of drawbacks one of the benefits of a class A is is that it's big and you have everything with you the biggest drawback is it looks like a brick it drives like a brick gas mileage is horrible so if you're looking for something you want to drive quite often generally a class a is not a good thing now before you buy anything before you go out and spend any of your money please listen to the next few videos on here because they're going to explain each one and don't waste your money because you can get suckered into a lot of stuff that you honestly don't need so until next time have a great day uh, hopefully the weather clears up and i can do some of these videos outside and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now. Thank you for watching my video. If you like this video, please click on the like button, which is the thumbs up button. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click on the subscribe button and then click on the bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified when any new videos are uploaded. Thank you and have a great day.